Hi everyone, it's James from Pro Tools Expert and you join me at Music Mesa 2017 here in a very sunny Frankfurt. First port of call is my new friends at Antelope Audio. I have joined, quite frankly, probably the most important person on the booth, um, Igor Levin, who is both the owner of the company and also the chief designer, is that fair to say? That is completely correct. So um, overnight we got some amazing news of two new well, I suppose they are two new products, aren't they? They're not just a refresh. It's a kind of a real rebuild from the ground up for the Goliath HD and the new Orion Studio. Uh, was it the Rev 2017? Yes. There, I've been reading my press releases. <laughs> Great. I love your energy. I wish, uh, I think I need a couple cups of coffee maybe to match you, but I'll, I'll do my best. That's called a 5 a.m. flight, <laughs> uh, two coffees and a bacon roll. But anyway. Yes. So tell us about the the kind of ethos behind the the refresh and the new dark gray, uh, carbon gray looking units, because they look amazing. Um, you guys know I'm a big fan of the Orion 32 HD, which I still haven't got my hands on but yet, by the way. Um, <laughs> so tell us about the refresh of the Goliath HD and the Orion. Well, I mean, with HD, it's not so much a refresh, but sort of integration of technologies. Right. We have a Goliath which does not have the HD, and we have a Ryan 32 HD, which doesn't have the Goliath. And right. so it's uh, like putting it together. Um, and yes, I mean, it makes sense. It, it comes from listening to what the customers want. You know, logically, uh, we introduce these technologies, we launch them, and we uh, get the feedback from the customers. And putting two and two together kind of made sense to do Goliath HD. But it seems like at the moment that you guys are on a stratospheric trajectory. There were a few years ago where we, where everyone knew of Antelope as their amazing clocking technology, or your amazing clocking technology. But since the Orion, the 32, and the Plus, uh, and the MP32, you guys seem to be on a on a amazing trajectory. Was that a conscious decision, or was that just something that sort of happened through time, energy, development? Well, a little bit of both, because. In business, in general, I think you're either growing or you're uh, you're declining. It's it's very very difficult to be in a steady position, especially in technology business. And so it was a conscious decision to basically uh, move forward. And the other thing is like uh, for me, it's kind of like doing it over again because I had another company many years ago. I had Aardvark, mm -hmm. and I have done most of these things. You know, some of the younger guys don't know, but you know, I was the first guy to do an eight-channel interface. Mm -hmm. I was the first guy to put the mic pre's on the interface. You know, I have done digital control mic pre's much before uh, people have done all these things. I have had a product that has DSP in my interface, and we're talking about, you know, year 2000. So mm -hmm. to me, this is not particularly challenging. And in a way, I kind of felt, um, you know, that the life and history moves a little bit in a circle. So I wanted to complete that circle. Having, having stopped producing the interfaces, mm -hmm. I went to clocks, and then I just felt I had to complete the circle again. Because, say, I'm making no, no bones about the fact that I love all the interfaces of yours I've, I've tried and reviewed. Um, I'm very much hoping some of the new charcoal gray finish ones will be heading my way very soon. <laughs> nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Um, but I, I would say certainly out there from reading what I do on other forums, yes, there are other forums out there. Um, a lot of people are saying a lot of nice things about what you guys are doing because not only is the quality of what you guys are putting out there exceptional right now, um, the feel and finish and everything, you're just really nailing it. Now, is that... I think I kind of see where you're going. You're rephrasing your previous <laughs> question, which I didn't completely answer. But so let me try again at answering the second aspect of the question, which is, you know, where is all this coming? Well, part of it is like, uh, at some point you get the holistic effect, you know. I'm, uh, I'm the kind of guy that likes uh, a lot of Asian philosophy. And a lot of things that I see is in terms of... Uh, that sort of uh, thinking. And so I do see, uh, you know, they say the whole is more than the sum of its parts. Yeah, and it really absolutely. is like that. So when you work, uh, uh, as I have uh, most of my life, in all kinds of interesting audio technologies, you get to the point, at some point, where knowing all these things come together for you very nicely. And what, in my case, you know, I started out as an analog engineer. I'm really 
Um, you know, I have a degree from the University of Michigan, uh, which in those days was a double degree in electrical engineering and computer uh, engineering. Which I can imagine has been quite handy. Yeah, uh, <laughs> but what's interesting is, you know, like I am fundamentally an analog guy. You know, everything uh, analog is where my heart is. And analog is the hardest thing to get right in audio. And so I always had it with me. I had that ability. And so the design, and, and, and I still, you know, I do like when I do mic pre's or like people say like, well, you're a clocking company. How can you do a mic pre-design? Surely you don't know anything about mic pre's. Well, yes, I do because I've done all kinds of amplifiers. You know, I used to work for medical electronics. I was a consultant for, you know, these are very, very challenging type of analog problems to solve. So having having that background, you know, incidentally, that brings us to modeling. You know, people say, okay, well, you're a clock company. Why are you doing mic pre's? Why are you doing uh, uh, monitoring controllers? Well, you know, for I, I just laugh at that because people just love the idea of, classifying you categorizing you're putting like a little tag it's electronics your... it's high level electronics people always I, I found people use the phrase medical grade and military grade in component specification so if you're used to doing that as a circuit design type thing why not apply that technology to audio interfaces and audio yeah but it's not just that it's it's not how the components are made it's just knowing how to use them because, you know, it's, it's like cooking, you know, you can get the best ingredients, but if you don't know how to cook, you know, it, it's not going to work out. In my case, you know, having that analog background, you know, I have uh, brought it back with the circuitry when it comes to conversion, mic pre's, monitoring, and now like people saying, well, why are you doing effects? Why are you doing, uh, you know, how are you doing this DSP stuff? Well, it's very easily because I actually, you know, we're doing vintage stuff. I can actually understand the circuits. When I look at those circuits, when I look at those equalizers or those pre's or those compressors, I actually know what those components are doing. And in modeling, it's very, very important because the truth is uh, computers are still not powerful enough to model everything. So whenever you're modeling something, you're taking some shortcuts. Otherwise, this thing is never gonna run on your PC, you know, unless you want like 90% CPU utilization. It's not practical. So people have to decide what they model, what they don't model. And I think in our case, we actually take the circuits, we analyze it, and we use the modeling method where we're actually modeling uh, it the way that the hardware does it, which is the FPGA. But I guess I digress from the topic. No, uh, it's, it's all good. I mean, all, all I can say is from my point of view, as as a reviewer, you guys make things very simple because actually your stuff just works out the box. Yes, there's been a few moments where even I, even I've called tech <laughs> support. Um, that's mainly because I don't read manuals, but hey. Um, so all I want to say from myself and from the community is, is keep doing what you guys are doing because currently you're nailing it uh, and I wish you all the very best success with whatever comes next. Uh, yes, I can't wait to try the two new units. Um, well, we'll see what we can do. I'm sure we can do something. You heard it here first. They're coming to me very soon. Um, sir, thank you so much. I, I will shake your hand off yes. camera because of the cup of tea. But, um, but for now, I've been James from Pro Tools Expert here at Music Messer 2017.